Hi, this is Evan. And this is Joe. And this is the Nonsensory Podcast. On today's episode, we ask, are we in the middle of an FPS renaissance? We talk Animal Crossing, Doom Eternal, and the status and future of E3. On the TV side, we discuss Hulu and FX's new sci-fi thriller devs and the bizarre true crime reality hit taking the internet by storm, Tiger King. So stick around and let's get into it. All right, so um, thank you for joining us on our inaugural episode. Um, we're kind of just going to go through this episode as kind of an introduction to ourselves. Um, real quick, real brief, just talk about our interests, what made us want to do the podcast, our little history, and you know, uh, today we're going to be talking about gaming, so we'll talk a little bit about our history of gaming, but we're also going to be talking later in the episode about um, some movie news, some TV news, some of the stuff that we're watching, playing right now. So it'll be a nice mix of stuff. Um, but to start off, I'll let Joe tell you a little bit about how he got into gaming and why he really wants to do this podcast. <clears throat> I got into gaming uh, basically because my older brother had a Game Boy. You know, was playing Kirby and all that, but even before that, we used to go to the pizza shop downtown in a small little town, you know, stoplight and and pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, every Friday we'd get pizza and they had a Donkey Kong arcade, you know. And uh, yeah, that's how I got into it and fell in love, you know, jumping over barrels. Yep. What was, uh, what's been your favorite console so far? Like, I mean, like. Are you a Nintendo guy? Are you an Xbox guy? Are you a PlayStation guy? I, I have to say, like, currently, like, PS4 is the stuff. Yeah, you find yourself using it most? Uh, more than anything. Mm-hmm. I, um, but if I had to go all time, I, I really have to stick with the N64. Okay, so if somebody were to come into your house and they were to, you know, go over to your consoles and they see their PS4, they see your X, they see your Switch. Which one would you be more devastated if they took at the moment? Like as of right now? Like, yeah, would you be would you be jacked because you like the PS4 most or would you be jacked because you got the Switch taken and you can't like have a thing that you can just take with you everywhere? Okay, so the PS4, you have all of your streaming services, whereas on the Switch, all you have is Hulu. Yeah. And like right now, that means like you just killed all my entertainment. Oh, God. Yeah. Especially right now, everybody's like trapped inside and they've got like, uh, if I couldn't, I guess I could use my phone and like cast stuff, maybe. Right. But like if you don't have a smart TV, then you're kind of screwed. Right. Yeah, okay. That's like, fair. My, my TV has Chromecast built in, but then you're like, you're killing your phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's really hard because animal crossing just came out and like that is my life have you been even playing it oh dude <laughs> okay tell me a little bit about your experience with animal crossing because i i've never been uh into like the the community builders or like farm games and stuff like that like so i know I, that stardew valley is a really big deal right um and i know they're very similar but i've just never so tell me about it i'm not huge into sims Like you wouldn't think it, but animal crossing is different because it is just so chill. Like you're, you're not stressed. Oh, I got to learn how to cook so that my guy doesn't starve. And then I got to, no, it's just, you know, I'm going to go do a little fishing. I'm going to shake a couple trees. So are there survival elements in it at all? Like, uh, do things like die and stuff? If you like, you know, you, like you brought up, like you don't need to eat or something like that. It's not like, it's not like playing like rust or so, something where you need to eat and stuff to yeah. s- continue playing. Right. I mean, you, you should care for your flowers and like trees and stuff. Like you want to plant trees and make it beautiful. It's mainly about beautifying things and like you expand your home and then it's like, it's kind it's very you're not under pressure to pay back the loan on your house. And like, that's the main driving force. I think early in the game is that you get a house and you have to work to pay it off and then you can expand it. Ooh, adulting simulator a little bit, a a little bit, but no one's beating down the door going, bring us our money. Yeah. Where's, where's my mortgage payment? (laughs) But so it's just chill. It's got chill music. I'm going to go do a little fishing. I'm going to do like catch some bugs. And so it's more about improving your community around you than like just make it look beautiful. Yeah. And you know, you're just chilling while you're doing that. I mean, 
and I think like the coolest thing for me is like they have a museum where all the bugs and fish that you catch and mm-hmm. like you can find fossils in the ground and then it puts it all on display and the like the museum in this game is gorgeous. You're, I'm going to have to show you because oh, yeah, like, it, it doesn't do it justice. It sounds you just it's one of those games that it is more than the sum of its parts. You pick it up and you just find yourself four hours later like what did i even do okay so whenever i talk about like games that you know are like a huge time sucker like they're a thing that you're like currently obsessed with right there's a thing about it that makes you okay with dumping that much time into it or like what is what is the thing that keeps you drawn in i guess like what what would you say is it is it like the sum of its parts like what you're talking about it's like is there no one thing you could really point out or is there just a thing that like t- is totally like the thing that you like? Like, is there something right. in it that appeals <clears throat> to you personally that you're like, I just love this part and I just want to play that. It's really hard because anything I say is not going to do it justice. It just, so it is kind of a, some of its parts. kind. Of yeah. Thing. I mean, it, you can put all this time in and all you just feel relaxed and especially right now mm-hmm. like that's exactly what you need you can put it on and just forget you know yeah you're not pressured to do anything you know you play anything else even like your fps it's like ah, i gotta be on the edge yeah i'm on like the complete opposite side of the spectrum <laughs> at, at the moment it's kind <laughs> of ridiculous um so I guess I guess I'll go and do a little bit about myself now since Joe's gone through and we kind of got off on a tangent on Animal Crossing. But who cares? This is our show. You can deal with it. All right. <laughs> Things need to be said when they're when the iron's hot. We have to strike. Okay. Um, so I um, have been playing games since I was a little kid. Blah blah blah. Everybody has. Um, <laughs> but um, my first console was a Sega. I loved it. Um, we got it from a yard sale, and then we got the Sega Se- <laughs> the Sega CD from a yard sale too. The same person sold the Sega CD later. Like, I, I don't understand. And man, that that sucked. The Sega CD was awful. <laughs> Every time I tried to play it, it just wouldn't work very well. Oh, it was terrible. A lot of FMV games. But, um, you know, after that, I my parents got me both PS, PS1 and PS2. Um, and I spent way too much time playing like GTA and all that stuff. Um, and then once I started buying my own systems and stuff, I switched between Xbox and PS or PlayStation pretty back and forth for a while. And now I currently play mostly on PC, but I have a uh, PS4 and I play through for the exclusives because of course they're PlayStation exclusive. Um, <laughs> and really, um, the way that I got into gaming was just like, I really liked playing it, but also like, I love to read about it and have like, uh, like I always like to read like the news about it and stuff. So like when I went to college and stuff, I um, went in for English lit and I did like critical writing and stuff like that. And um, I wanted to take it over into a journalism career or like somewhere in teaching and stuff. So I tried the teaching thing and then I tried the journalism thing. And I, I didn't know that. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, um, I went to do the teaching thing and found out that I just didn't, like the stress of all the little Those children. Damn kids. Oh man, there's so many <laughs> little children, and I couldn't. I, you know, it's one of those things where you're like you don't know until you're like in the fire. Yeah, you're just like going into it, and you're like, I guess. I mean, the, I guess this might work. And then you get to the point where you're like, time to do internships and all that stuff. And then you get actually in there, and you, it sucks. Did you get that far? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I was going for my masters and stuff, and then I Dude. started to, started working in early childhood education, and it was just like not. Not for me. Like, I don't... Those people are saints. They have the patience of like, angels. I know we're, like, supposed to be, like, doing this together, and people are going to think, like, we know each other, like, super duper. No, no, this, I this never is knew. the best... This is the best part about the podcast, is that, like, we know each other for the most part, but, like, we're going to definitely find out some stuff about each other along the way. Yeah. Which like, is nice. It's, like, that genuine kind of discovery thing. So you can come along with us. Th- um, I mean, that's... That's awesome, dude. That's a noble pursuit. That, uh, but then, like finding. But out then that, I was like, I hate these kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> noble intentions until I figured out I hate children. No, I'm just kidding. But um, so then I wanted to uh, get to work in journalism, and I started to go for that um, a little bit. And I found uh, I worked with a guy who worked for like an independent games news uh, website, and so I started writing for them for a couple years. 
and that was really fun. Um, it was like really challenging. I, I don't know if I can really talk about the specifics of the place. Um, but it definitely gave me like, a a new appreciation for that kind of stuff. And, um, so I've always been interested in that, but now we're like to the point where you're on YouTube and you can just kind of make your own stuff happen, you know? So like, so, I don't need to work for anybody else really at this point. I can still talk about the news and maybe right. have people. One of us at least has some kind of credit. I, I suppose. I mean, I don't know. Like I said, it was independent. It was all like on. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll just, I'll just yeah. say that. Um, yeah. It was, it was a good time. Don't say too much. There was a lot of people that yeah. I met that I really enjoyed. We did some cool stuff we did like a fundraiser stream for like 24 hours we did extra life one year oh nice yeah. um you know i never went to any conventions and stuff i couldn't really i always had to work my other job too and i didn't want to uh <clears throat> the multiple job life. i had i had the mo- the money maker job and then i had the passion job and so but i mean that's that's the journey so far for me i guess that's how i've reached this point that's why i want to do this podcast is because i like talking about this stuff like way too much and um, most people want to hit me because I don't. <laughs> I have nothing else to talk about except this stuff. But whatever, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, for me, that's me and cars. But that's that's uh, cool. I mean, like I can't I can't yeah. reciprocate that. I don't know anything about cars. Yeah. Like if we were doing a cars podcast, uh, I'd be the but, worst partner of all time. <laughs> but cars podcasts are so boring. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. Like I mean, unless you're doing video. Yeah. yeah then you can do yeah. you got the b-roll to make things interesting but yeah i don't know you don't have to be like the hardcore of the hardcore to like listen to an audio only cars podcast yeah it's a bit <sighs> much for me <laughs> not not to take a dump on any of the audio only <laughs> pod, car podcasts out there i'm sure <laughs> you're you guys, hardcore i'm sure you guys are killing it but <laughs> okay evan so i kind of got to talk already about what i've been playing i've been playing animal crossing so why don't you tell us what you're doing lately uh, so I've got two things that are currently taking up all of my time outside of trying to get this podcast started. <laughs> um, I've been playing a ton of doom, which I've been looking forward to since I finished 2016. Basically, um, you know, if you played 2016 and it just ca- kind of came out of nowhere, like it didn't co- really come out of nowhere. Like you, people were looking forward to it for a while, but like how good it was after like doom was dead for so long it seemed like it was such a smash hit that you knew that they were going to give you know, a, 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 a sequel eventually. Right. So like as soon as I finished doom 2016, I was waiting for eternal, you know, you just knew they were going to announce one and then they did. And so it finally came out and it's freaking fantastic. Um, it's, it was not easy to get into at first because it feels like very different than it looks very frantic. It's so, like, I, I can't, if I went back to play Doom 2016, which I think does some things better than Doom Eternal, I'll just put that out there, but um, if I were to go pl- back and play Doom 2016, the one thing I would feel the whole time is that I was playing with cement shoes. <laughs> because right, right. you, the between the ability to double dash and the ability to like have your hook shotgun with your with your uh, super shotgun and you can just like shoot it at demons and take yourself across the map and stuff and like the the wall jumping and the the little uh, bars that you can the monkey bars you can use and stuff like all that stuff is just so built into the way you're supposed to play this one that it would feel like I was just I would want to be using the double dash and the hook the whole time I'm playing the last one um so I think they did a really good job of making those things like super fun to do. Yeah. Like that's those are my favorite parts of the combat by far is just being able to just have that mobility. It's so good, especially when you start unlocking stuff for your character or your suit or your weapons and stuff. Once you start unlocking stuff and giving yourself like more boosts to like how fast you can perform glory kills and how far away you can use them from and like all kinds of stuff. Once that stuff starts to unlock and you get to use all that stuff in concert and in battle, it just feels so good. Um, I would say it kind of trips up in that like the, the ammo management is like a problem for like a little stretch there where you're not like you haven't unlocked enough stuff to make you feel like truly badass yet to where you, 
I felt for a little while that I was just always ammo strapped and constantly trying to get ammo. I mean, is that part of the like the horror? Like, because the horror element of the game, wanting you to feel like you're, you know. I don't know if it's so much the horror element. I just think that from a purely mechanical standpoint, like people, the last game, people complained that there weren't enough enemies and stuff and there wasn't enough to do. Like, um, it didn't feel like as frantic and crazy as it could. So they, I think they really wanted to like have you have like this depth of the way that you play and like they make you play this way throughout the whole game. So like just like having less ammo and less health pickups and all that stuff, that's like per- personally catered basically to this new doom eternal play style. And um, like the way that you have to use certain things against certain demons and stuff like you can try to play outside the box, but it's going to be harder. Um, and it takes a little while to actually like get the hang of like when you want to use that stuff to like most optimally play. I mean, I, I I really like the, the system doom doom eternal is not going to be a thing that I really like get into. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not a huge doom person. That's fine. I mean, the last doom I played was doom three, which I liked because it did go more the horror route. Like I I actually had a lot of fun with doom three, but I mean, horror games in general aren't really my speed for the most part, even though like that's something that I really like is mm-hmm. getting that like I like games that can make you feel like the weight of everything like not from the horror perspective, but Dark Souls, like when you kill something, you feel the weight of the fact that you've taken down something you've been fighting against. For yeah. Like I finally figured this thing out and like when a horror game can make make you feel like that powerlessness and mm. then when you get past it and it's just like ah you know that power yeah it, it it's so. weird it's a good thing it's 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 weird that you bring that up because like it's a good comparison point because when i play dark souls it's tough and it's trying to make you feel like you're not strong right but when you overcome that when you overcome that challenge you feel like it's that yeah, just, but at the same time, like I don't know if necessarily making Doom harder makes me feel more badass as the Doom Slayer because the Doom Slayer is supposed to be the Doom Slayer. He's supposed to just right. wipe the floor with these monsters and stuff. So, so when you, it you think they went kind of the wrong direction there? I it, for a stretch there for a stretch. Like I said, it's it's like where I'm at now. I haven't finished it yet, but like where I'm at now feels super comfortable. Where you do start to feel that way where you start to feel like the the guy that's supposed to be tearing through these demons once you once you've like acclimated yourself to how the game works how it wants you to play and like you have an understanding of how you should play um then you start to be able to actually like go through it like the last game where you could just like terrorize like this whole room you'd be a tornado going through the through the level and stuff could couldn't it be that it was just part of like how you were playing at the time because that that doom the new the way the ammo system works now we're shooting with their different things and doing like you know your glory kills get you whatever and you're well i will say that playing 2016 like i could just basically just use the shotgun the whole time right but i think they want you to actually have to I mean, the little bit that I've known about know about the game, you know, they want you to you have to mix it up, to yeah. Get the armor and to get you know ammo and to right, right. I think that they definitely wanted to do that, and I, I appreciate what they were trying to do with it, but I wish that there was more. I wish that there was more agency to like what I wanted to play with. I guess, yeah. So. So yeah, I can wholeheartedly recommend Doom Eternal for for like anybody. I think it's pretty tough and the levels are kind of long. But I also have grown to like 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 I feel like I spent half of the first like talking about it just just crapping on it. <laughs> That's not what I'm trying to do. I think it's fantastic. Like I think it's better than Doom 2016. Um it just feels different in a way that's like at first kind of confusing but then once you figure it out you're like yes i'm fully in the space that they want me to be in and you just keep going and it's a it's it's a gauntlet man some of these some of these levels are so long i'll spend like 45 minutes to an hour just getting through a single level and it's like it feels much longer than the last game i don't know for sure like i didn't you know i wasn't sitting there with a stopwatch but right 
you know, it feels like these levels are longer. You get like halfway through it and you're like, oh, I got to be pretty close to the end. And then it's like, nope, you're halfway through it. And then you keep going. Well, I'm, I personally don't think like more of something that's good is not a problem. No. Yeah, for sure. It's just, yeah. it's just the intensity of the fighting over that long of a stretch. Like I basically have just been playing it in mission long stretches where I'll just play for like an hour and I'll just get through yeah. it and be like, oh, and then take a break and then come back to it later. It's like crushing the intensity. Like does it, it, it weighs on you. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's still fun like the entire the, time that you're playing right. it, but you're mentally kind of exhausted at the end just because you, you don't want to go for a second hour. I mean, you're just, not. you're whipping around so much and like managing your ammo and armor and all this stuff the yeah. whole time. Every, every room is basically just like one giant shooter puzzle. Um, yeah, I would. I I can highly recommend it to pretty much everybody, unless you well, don't like shooters. Uh, and no kitties. Yeah, it's no, not for no, kids. no kitties. Oh my god, there's it's it's like they took they cranked it up to eleven with with all yep. the all the violence. It's nuts. Yeah, I mean that's my thing. Like I'm not a fan of like really gory movies, and mm-hmm. so I can't do like the ultra violence. Like I appreciate it for what it is, but. I, I think when like I when we pulled back and I was like showing you footage yeah of the game and I was like oh check that out and I was just like sitting there watching it happen I was like damn yeah it's but, like, like it's a bit <laughs> yeah but like when you're playing it you just don't think about it yeah as much you know it's just like a a thing between inputs at that point you know yeah because yeah. it's just you're doing it over and over and over and it's so fast um but yeah when you sit back and you like look at it you're like wow it's just nothing but murder <laughs> like, <laughs> like the whole time um yeah <laughs> so uh yeah i would play murder simulator 2020 <laughs> it's fantastic that's that should be the name of it but i mean purple goo do you want to talk about purple goo oh dude don't get me started on the purple goo. Yeah, i told you i i told you that they were gonna introduce it again later in the game it happened and it did <laughs> and i it was like it was like in a fight room it was, i think it was like uh I think it was one of the challenge rooms. Maybe I could be wrong, but um, I popped into a room and it was like all the doors locked. This game is Devil May Cry one, by the way, basically like, you, do you play Devil May Cry? I have never played any Devil May Cry. Okay. Um, so in Devil May Cry, what they would do is they would just, you'd go from area to area. And when you got into a new area, they would just lock you off. Right. And you'd have to kill all the enemies in the room and then it would unlock the thing. And you'd go to the next room. It's, that's basically Doom Eternal the whole way through. It's just like every... I mean, that's... A lot of games use that premise. No, know? for sure, for sure. Yeah. But it's just like... I, th- I think it's funny because, you know, we talk about how Doom's like this revolutionary kind of thing. Yeah. And it, like what it did for shooters and stuff. And it totally did. But it, when you boil it down, like we've been playing stuff that kind of follows that since like 2002. There are, Yeah, there are a lot of games that have t- actually just that seem revolutionary and it's not that they're not, it's just that they do a good job of taking what's already there Mm -hmm. and bringing it together. Yeah. An element from this game, an element from that game, and you can pull it all together to be greater than the sum of its parts again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but so the purple goo, (laughs) to get back to the purple goo, they lock us, uh, they lock you in a room. (laughs) That's Scary, scary, purple goo. Uh, so damn it, they lock, they lock you in. No, they just, it wasn't in a room, but it was just in like this open alleyway, and you had to basically like. It was like playing that lava game when you're a kid, where it's like, don't step on oh, yeah. the lava. Basically, yeah. like you just had to stay off of the purple stuff, and they just kept spawning enemies and stuff. And the first time I was complaining about it, there were no enemies really that were like messing with you too much. It was just like the basic imps and you can more just, about platform. Yeah. It was more like to introduce it as, as a mechanic and to like, let you use it in platforming and stuff. But then like they threw it into combat and it was just so bad. I just hated it so much. Like it, I get, I get that it's supposed to add some challenge, but it's just not fun to play that part. I hate the purple goo. If they can <laughs> patch it out, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you, please patch it, please out. Bethesda patch it out. Um, when you have something that's meant to be fast paced, slow down goo, it, it just shouldn't be there. It, yeah. It, it goes against the whole grain of the game. If, if they slowed you down and then added something in that was like uh, new and interesting to offset it, maybe. 
Right. But yeah, the whole point of Doom, especially this one, they give you like a double dash and a hook shotgun. And then they're like, here's all the, the last one was fast. Here's more speed. And then they're just like, but also here's some purple goo that slows you down. Well, maybe if what, maybe the trick is they should have introduced the, the hook shot or the double jump after introducing the goo. And then you'd feel like you got your speed back. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. You know, yeah. But, oh, I don't, I didn't have the hook shotgun until after the purple goo. So it does help because like if you if yeah. you do end up falling into it, you then you can just like look at an enemy and just pull yourself out of it real quick. Cause like otherwise I don't think you can really like jump when you're no. in it. So you're just kind of stuck. Yeah. You just have to like walk out of it. <laughs> Which is <laughs> lame. But, but maybe that's what they were trying to go for. I wish uh, that I could use the purple goo against them. Is what I like if I could get throw them to walk into it. And yeah, like because you have like a you have like a freeze grenade. Yeah. So, like, if I could just shoot out like a goo grenade <laughs> and just like be like, get through my puddles, suckers, you know, like maybe that would be good. But goo, the fact goo, that the fact that goo. I have to deal with it and they don't makes me so sad. <laughs> oh man! And there's like perks and stuff for like they like name the perks of like all the things that increase your ability in the game. So like, there's there's stuff that you can like increase your freeze grenades and stuff. So if they added another grenade. Oh, I could just think of like all the goo. names that they would put like <laughs> like goo boost and like all kinds of ridiculous <laughs> stuff. Goo boost one, goo boost two. Oh man. Um but yeah, the I, stickiest. I guess we've gone over uh a <laughs> the stickiest of the icky my friend. <laughs> I came back in time to hit you with my goo grenade. Um so I guess we've talked about Doom pretty much at length yeah, at this point. Uh, um I I've also I don't I don't want to keep going too much with what I'm playing, but I've we got another member for the Monster Hunter crew. <laughs> um, so now we're up to five. We got five. Eileen and Colin aren't in it yet, you know. But um, I, okay, well, uh, your worlds, right? Yeah, Monster Hunter World. Yeah. Okay. I cannot get like I had that PS yeah PS4. I had Monster Hunter World. Mm. I could not get into it. Like, are you doing Iceborne? No, no. We're still we're still on just the regular content. Iceborne came out in October. Yeah. Um, and we, I guess we're pre- getting pretty close. Like, I think that we have like uh, the Elder Dragons to beat yet, and then we're like close to done um, with the main game content. I don't know though. Like, I don't really want to look into it too much. I'm having fun just like discovering yeah. things. And- that's like something that's been dead for so long. With the way things work, with let's plays and walkthroughs and just the internet in general, who actually plays a game and just experiences the game anymore? Like, yeah, I don't think that's a thing. I don't. I, okay, so I I like it. I like that that thing exists as an option where you can just go out and be like, "How do I beat this?" Right, and you can, or you can just be like, "I I want to play that game, but I don't have the time." Like. I don't know if that, like if I wanted to look at Death Stranding or something like that. If right. I wanted to watch Death Stranding because it's a freaking movie anyways, it's like barely a game. <laughs> Believe me, Eileen has it for PS4. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> but not not a fan. No, I don't know. I I don't know. I don't feel like I've given it a fair shake, but at the same time, I gave it kind of a fair shake. I played for like 45 minutes and was like, "Oh god." But um but like it, you know, for a game like that, I could have just gone and watched it on YouTube and saved right. my money, you know. So I I like appreciate that. Um, I mean, Kojima wants to make movies and I, I say you've been doing it this whole time. Yeah. Like don't stop now. <laughs> I mean, I, I was fine with him making movie games when they actually had gameplay, <laughs> right. but now this is just like, it's, it's just gotten a little self-indulgent. <laughs> no, I don't remember what metal gear it was that I was watching my friends play, but I literally watched, it was probably two hours. I watched him play and, no joke it was i came in and it was um a cutscene. okay Cutscene rolled walk five feet no freaking lie walk five feet hit a button Cutscene for a half hour mm-hmm. walk sounds, five feet this sounds like four this yeah sounds like was it on ps3 yes oh yeah that was four uh, yeah. it was it was terrible i borrowed okay i had to borrow a buddy's ps ps3 to play mgs because at that point i only had the 360 um and he was like, yeah, you can borrow it or whatever. And I, and I got it and I bought the game and it, the download, like the install took for 
forever, dude. I swear to I swear I like put it on, went and made dinner and watched a movie and came back and it was still installing or something. I mean, the internet wasn't great back in those days. No, no, it wasn't for sure. But this was all from disc. This was all installing straight from disc. That's that's no excuse for that. Yeah, like I I got the game and I didn't I got the game and I didn't realize that you'd have to install it like that. Yeah, so then I was like I popped it on and I was like, "Yeah, it's time to go." And then it was like, "You need to install this game." And it took that long and I was so sad. And then yeah, I played through it. I played through it and I loved it. But in hindsight, wow. <laughs> there was it, there was so many cutscenes in that game. It's so bad. Like I like I said I watched it for 2 hours and I think I never saw any gameplay. Oh no, I I think I remember like stretches of the game like that where yeah, you would sit and watch like 45 minutes and then you'd play for like 10 minutes and then you'd watch another 45 minutes. It, you're already making movies, Kojima. Just keep doing that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and besides, like... <clears throat> come on. I just lost it. <laughs> oh, damn. Okay. Well, if you well, think of it, we'll come back. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but, yeah. Um, I I have enjoyed... Like, uh, okay. Oh, oh. I remember it now. Okay, so... I remember when Rage. Do you, did you ever play Rage? Yeah, yeah. I have it on Steam. Yeah. You want to talk about disappointing? <laughs> oh yeah, man. That game was not what that, I was looking for at all. It was like I had more fun with it probably than I give it credit for now. Mm-hmm. But it, it was basically trying to be Borderlands, and I don't think they were hiding that at all. It felt like Borderlands and Fallout like mixed together. Yeah. Yeah. And there, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think there's a place for that, or at least not in the way that they did it. I think they but, it could have been if it was like more fun. But I'm not trying to talk about rage because okay. it's been out forever. Uh-huh. I was just going to say that it's just dis- like on top of the disappointment of that game. I remember putting that in like the first time to go play it on the PS3, mm-hmm. and it was the same story. It was like I put it in, and it's like, oh, we gotta you know install the game, and it's like, okay, you know. Not unusual. Yeah. And it's like three hours later. Uh, is it in yet? Yeah, that's the one. That's the one thing that I like about playing on PC is just like I've got my hardwired fast connection. I want to play, you know, like uh, Forza. So this is like over. It's like I think it's like 120 gigabytes. It's like, all right, I got to wait 30 minutes. But like on yeah. PS4, I'd be like two hours. You yeah. know, it's just I don't know. That's one thing that I hope that they change with the new consoles is that oh, oh I'm sure like I'm the sure. installs will be much faster and I don't know it's just the install times on PS4 can be just atrocious. I think we're waiting a year for our new consoles though. That's going to happen. Well yeah, I mean there's no E3 this year. Um should we just segue? I think we should just segue. Okay. So right. we'll segue over. So E3 we'll, we'll do a little bit of news. Yep. We'll do a little bit of news. We should have like one, one like not for this episode, mm-hmm. but in the future, we should have like a, like a Dateline 2020. News, news, news. <laughs> yeah, something something ridiculous. A little tune. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, like a little like a little ticker. Like, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. We'll do that. Um, <laughs> so E3 2020 is canceled. Um, I don't know what this means. Um, I think that this is like everybody's kind of like is this the end for e3 forever because i i don't know i don't know how much you know about it joe but but e3 the way that the e, the way that e3 works is the e3 is uh uh put together by the esa which is the entertainment software association right and they're like the lobbying body for games um so they go to like washington and do all that kind of stuff oh yeah i definitely think it would be a bad thing for games for e3 to go go away well, uh, I I mean but, I mean in terms oh, of like so the ESA I, makes fifty percent of their profit from E three from E three. Right. So if there's no E three this year, do they make it to next year? Like, they're so they've already announced the dates for next year, right? So presumably that's a thing. You think that's just damage control? I think so. I I have a hard time. I have a hard time believing that. What's going to happen, I think, is that people are going to realize they don't need E3. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that that's a good thing for gaming. And for me, 
I grew up like most of your major gaming news came from hearing what happened at three E3. Oh yeah, dude. I would come home and like on the, on the days that that stuff was happening, oh, yeah. I would go to school and there would be like, okay, here's the schedule. Here's what's going to be out today. And then like, you'd either go home and watch the stuff that was going to be streaming like after, sorry, got to turn. It, it happens. Um, so you'd either be watching the stuff that was like scheduled to be streaming after you got off of school or you would go and, um, like be able to go back and watch all the stuff that had already premiered. And that was just like the most exciting thing for me. Oh yeah. Um, I love I that dreamed stuff. of going to a three. Well, and now I, you can E3. go. Yeah. But it's like, now you can go and that's all what I've always wanted. But at the same time, it's just like you, the show is like failing now. Yeah. So it sucks. Cause like, I would love to go to it, but who knows if it's even going to exist Yeah. in the future, you know, I don't know that it's a good, that it'll go away. But I have a feeling it's going away. I think a lot of what happened with E3 has been because of um, what's what what like Nintendo did. To be honest, like with their uh, directs and stuff like that. Like oh, uh, yeah. Nintendo came out and was just like, "We're not going to do this big thing. We're just going to put everything out online and let everybody watch this stuff." And it kind of like showed people that you don't really need to have a big presentation in the press if people like really just care about your game. So like everybody loves a Nintendo game. So everybody that has a switch is like, like chomping at the bit for I, uh directs and they save millions of dollars from having to go to E3 every year, you know, and now you're, you're a hundred percent correct. Everybody else is doing it now. I mean, well, not yeah. everybody, but like Sony does it now. I just, I, I really, <clears throat> I still think it saves money. But I still think there is something to having the big fanfare. Oh heck yeah! I'm gonna be sad when it's gone. I yeah. just it was just like I don't know. It's like even even though I know that it's not super important and it could like go away, and I could still get my news just the same on it. It's kind of like people that watch like the super bowl but only when it happens like only like nobody they'll they'll like just watch the super bowl yeah they don't don't, don't watch football yeah so they'll just they'll just come because it's like the big event and that's that's what e3 is for me i don't pay that much attention i mean i'm gonna have to now (laughs) because you you better (laughs) it's my job (laughs) it's your side it's my side gig (laughs) i mean that is what e3 was for, for me, and I feel like there are a lot of gamers out there that that's the case. Mm-hmm. The only time we're really paying attention and we feel like like when E3 is happening, you really feel like a community. Like gaming is a thing, you know? It's like, it's big. I mean, and now it's not as much necessary to get that feeling because it is bigger. Mm-hmm. But like when I was a kid, gaming hadn't fully transitioned transitioned into the mainstream there was still like you play video games you're a loser you know well like i I just don't like i mean even i who reads a bunch of news about games like even i didn't really care all that much when like like i cared and i watched them but it wasn't the same is like whenever sony came out with their recent thing where they talked you know they talked about the ps5 stuff and then there was like a like a closer look at um, the Xbox Series X or whatever. Um, like I knew about it, and I like love I like love that stuff. I love the gaming news and stuff, but like I didn't really care that much about yeah. either of those. And nobody that I knew really was talking about it either. You know, like versus like if E three was was just happening, everyone's talking. About I, it. People that I know that like like play games and stuff. It, no matter what, when E three would come around, I it, I could bring up E three and people were like, yeah, yeah, I saw that stuff. You know, right. like, wasn't it E three last year that Zelda uh, Breath of the Wild two was announced? Yeah, yeah. Like that's that's how you do it. That's how you do E three. You you still save your huge punches mm-hmm. for when E three happens. All right, and Microsoft was going to do that this year, um, but then E three got canceled, and so now they're. I don't. I don't know. You know, they're going to have to do some sort of like video blowout. Or something to just like tell everybody like the games you know we're gonna need to see the games we're gonna need to have like a final price and stuff for both of these things 
and Sony was out of E3 a while ago, so you'd have to imagine that they have plans. But I'm interested to see how they do it because, like, I just I don't know how they're gonna make the big announcement because I the thing about E3 is that you know everyone's watching. Mm-hmm. If you go on and it's like now we're gonna do something on our own platform, you have to gain, you have to work to get that attention. All right, yeah, it'll be. I mean, it just relies more on like news, uh, news channels, but not news channels, but like you know, like news outlets to spread the word for you. Because like when Sony came out and wanted to talk about the PS Five, they came out and they talked I to mean, Wired. And then it was like, okay, here's this Wired article, and Fair then it, enough. it got that's, disseminated across the, right. across media and stuff. But it's not that's that's fine. But you're still it's it turns it into like this passing thing that you read about instead of like yeah. here this is happening three months right from now. now. Here's the yeah. here's the day. Get get pumped because in three months you're gonna have all kinds of just new stuff just hit you. And there's it's a waterfall. Yeah, it was. It, I think that that was what it was. It was like you know, it was just like a shotgun of cool stuff that was just gonna, <laughs> you know, it, it was yeah. like here you want you want all the cool stuff that's coming out. It's and a doom shotgun to the face. It was, it was a double barrel shotgun, and now it's just now it's gone. Now it's stuck in the purple goo <laughs> <laughs> for who knows how long. E three has gone the way of the purple goo. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah. What do you think this means for moving forward? That like like you. Hold, 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 um, it, it's you make a point because it does take away the magic, but I do forget that like we are in the era of Twitter and like I don't use social media that much, very yeah. much. So yeah. like it's easy to forget we're in Twitter verse and everything else. People hear about things, mm-hmm. but it does. It's exactly like you say. It takes away the excitement of it. Yeah, maybe like, maybe I'm just an old man yelling at a cloud right now. I probably am, but like, yeah, I just grew up with this stuff, and it was always a thing. And so, for me to have it go away, I'm gonna be like, eh. you know. But like, I see why it's not really that necessary anymore. Like, it, like we're seeing with people, like everybody's having these views on, you know, having to go to the office right now, right? Because you're like, well, maybe we should just do work remotely all the time because people are gonna see. That this is just a way to save money. Why well, have the overhead of a giant home office? Right. And it's kind of the same thing. It's like, why have the overhead of a giant E3, uh, E3 presentation that you could just save the money on and put towards something else? I don't know. Granted, for like, you know, it's different because like you're talking about publishers and studios versus like the console makers, you know? So like Microsoft and Sony don't care that they're saving a couple million dollars. They have so much money. Here, like, here's the example that I have. Okay. What if we just take July 4th and all, we take all our fireworks and we just launch one a day all year? Oh, like all year? Yeah. Not well, just one across the month of July, just like the whole year. Oh, yeah. You know, I'll set a firecracker off every day for a year. Woo. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's... <laughs> then Then you're just the uh, jerk neighbor that everybody hates. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's like taking but a dump on your porch. <laughs> that's what happens if E3 goes away. Yeah. Well, not only is E3 gone for this year, but it looks like now indefinite delays for Last of Us 2. Yeah, man. I I was really looking forward to it. You know, the Last of Us, the first Last of Us is like my, it's it's definitely up there with like one of my favorite Sony exclusives. As far as stories yeah. go, like storied video games, it's got to be my number one. Yeah, I mean, it gets the game gets a lot of flack for being like a zombie story, you know, amongst a thousand zombie stories or whatever. But it just does it so good. It, dude, it, the whole it makes me it made me cry. Yeah, the perf- multiple times. I mean, the performances in that game are just so. Did you watch the documentary about it? Have you seen the Last of Us documentary about it? There's a documentary. Oh yeah, there's a making of Last of Us documentary. You need to watch it. It's so good. Like they they show like mocap. Of them like doing the scenes and stuff, and the way that uh, the way that like Troy Baker who plays Joel, um, yeah. the way that he and Ashley Johnson like go through the game and like they they show their performances and stuff and like the when you see the mocap performance of like when his spoilers when his daughter gets shot, um, and he's like crying and stuff like that, man, it's just it's 
like his performance is really good. Don't get me wrong. But like they also the way that they take it from the mocap and like I feel like looking at the final product like it's you're just like, man, how do they do this stuff? You know, they're so good at it. But I don't know what the delay means. I, yeah, um, I don't know. I'm not really worried about the game mm-hmm. necessarily. I don't think a delay is going to hurt it, but <clears throat> it just, it sucks that it won't be in our hands as much quicker. Well, I think it's just um for, for like, we're, we're just coming off of the whole E3 stuff. We were talking about how Sony had the, uh, that Mark Cerny's whole presentation. And it was like this really dry, poorly received reveal of like all this important PS five stuff. And then like you roll from that into this delay. And there's been all this talk about like, if, if they're going to be able to even have enough stuff to make PS fives and like what's going to happen with the, with, oh, yeah. with Voldemort right now. And if it's going to push <laughs> everything back and it's just like, it's just another thing that doesn't look very good for Sony. And um, like, I think that like the, here's what they, they, they said. The good news is we're nearly done with the development of last of us part two. However, even with us finishing the game, we were faced with the reality that due to logistics beyond our control, we couldn't launch the last of us part two to our satisfaction. We wanted to make sure Everyone gets to play The Last of Us Part Two around the same time, ensuring that we're doing everything possible to preserve the best experience for everyone. This meant delaying the game until such a time where we can solve these logistical issues. So it sounds like it's just related to Voldemort. Like, yeah. like everybody... They, they, they're working from home. Like yeah. Everyone else. And that, they're finishing the game from imagine home. Imagine trying to make a game when you can't see anybody else that's working on it. I mean, that's huge. Well, I mean, I guess we can also talk about the, the crunch... Uh, article yeah. that that Kotaku wrote. Um, I didn't actually read the article. To be fair, but I I know like I've heard others talk about it, and the idea <clears throat> they're not not getting compensated for their time. Well, before we before we move on to the just the okay. topic of right. crunch in general. Okay. Um, they were saying that it was taking so long for the game. Like like people at the studio were getting very upset because like there's a very loose leadership going on there yeah. and so people would be at like meetings all day and they'd have to get like they'd have to wait for stuff to get signed off on and they'd you know have to wait for these people to get out of these meetings to then submit their stuff so that they get an opinion and then so you're wasting all this time between people like doing all this stuff and so like, it's artificially created crunch i mean it's created as a result of like poor management and like i can only imagine like if their management was bad when everybody was going to the office Oh, yeah, you know, like yeah. how so like I, I, granted, like they're saying here that the game was pretty much done. And if it was going to come out on May 29th and like this is a delay based entirely on on Voldemort, um, <laughs> then like I can I can believe that they're really just like tightening the last bits of the game up and I don't think it'll affect things too much. Right. Um, But it still seems like it would just be a nightmare just just going off of what they were talking about with the poor management like now they're working under poor management spread out all over the place in their own homes oh that's that's got to be hell yeah yeah but uh, <clears throat> the crunch thing though i'll let you i'll let you talk about I, I, uh, this is a very contentious topic and everybody has their own opinions on it um so it, we'll, we'll go through it as best we can understandably like I don't want to ha- be forced to stay around at the shop any longer than I have to. There are days where that happens. So and so said they need their car back tomorrow. Mm-hmm. You know, they're picking it up first thing in the morning. Their brakes aren't done. I have to stay there and get the, the get it done. Mm-hmm. I mean, bottom line, I still get compensated. I mean, I don't see the the problem there. I mean, I don't I don't even get time and a half if that happens. Yeah. You know, and I don't get to chop off a half hour later on in the week. No, I, I just worked 40 and a half hours, you know, if it takes me that much longer. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, these guys are making it up on the other end, you know, and it's not, <clears throat> it's not like they're going from making the game into going right into the next thing. They're getting time off after that. You know, you don't go right from one game into the next. That's not how it works. Yeah. So you, you and I, 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 I tend to agree that like, yeah, like you're going to get, you're going to crunch really hard for like a year, maybe two or something like that. But then you get 
like all this time off afterwards, but like, and a healthy check. And, but at the same time, like I haven't been through it to know, like if I came out on the other side, if, right. if I, if I would then view those things as worth it afterwards, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause if you're working on a game really hard for like five years and then it's like, well, you get six months off after that. It's like, yeah, but then you're like right back into your next five year freaking title. You know, it's just like, it's gotta be a lot. Fair enough. I, I can't speak as someone who's been through it. Right. That's, but. The, that's the thing is like, I, I think that looking at it from the outside, I'm like, well, you know, I put in, I put in a lot of time where I work and I don't get paid nearly that much, you know? And like, if you don't want to do it, then don't do it and all that stuff. But at the same time, like, I think that it's got to be all this stuff I think has to be like case by case. Yeah. So like, if we're talking about naughty dog, you know, a lot of their crunch is due to poor management. So like if they, if the management was doing everything that they could and they were just running into these issues that they couldn't figure out and like the project necessitated right that you had to do the crunch because of you know just general problems with developing this game then okay but if you're telling me that you know it's taking you 7 hours to get some stuff approved isn't isn't a lot of a lot of crunch is made by the fact that they have to set a date yeah, exactly. You have to put this theoretical number out there. This is when it's going to end. Mm-hmm. And then as that day comes up, it's like you, that's when you realize the amount of things that need to come together. Yeah, crunch is all about pushing up against that release date and like right. absolutely needing to hit that release date. But I think at this point we're in a time where most people just understand Ga- making a game it's an art and it takes time. And if you want a good game, you have to give them the leeway. And if they have to push a date back, push the date back. (laughs) Yeah. I don't, I think we're, you know, it's logically, you know, that would make sense. Well, we'll we'll look at Metroid, Metroid prime four. They announced it how long ago. And then they put out a direct, like you were saying, mm -hmm. they put out a direct and they were like, Oh, you know, unfortunately because of developmental problems, we killed it. And we're just starting from scratch. That means years of delay. Mm -hmm. And no, I mean, disappointing, yeah. But I don't think anyone's going to fault Nintendo for wanting to put out a good product. Yeah, I think that there's like, I think there's a very vocal minority of people that like get upset when that stuff happens. Where like they're like, I'm not gonna buy the game now. They promised me at this. This is stupid. I'm tired of waiting for it. And it's like wh- I, I, you're I, only denying yourself. I don't understand the mentality at all. No. Like I, I hope that we're moving into a time where people are okay with having games delayed because there's a billion games out there anyway, so you can freaking play. Like I'm sure you have a backlog. Like if get Do- over it. <laughs> if Doom got delayed, I'd feel bad, but I wouldn't like go and be mad at the developers. I wouldn't be like, I'm not going to buy Doom now because I have to wait three or months. Send a send them an email cussing them out. Yeah, yeah. It's just like I I think people understand that these things are like super complex and really like. Well, all I'm trying to say is that there doesn't need to be that much of a level of crunch. If it's just no, development, yeah. like it, we want to hit this date. Cut yourself some slack. Yeah, we all back. get it. Yeah, th- no, that would definitely solve it because, like we were saying, it's like uh, the the big a, com- a big component of crunch is the fact that you're working up against this deadline. Just push the deadline back, and then you have less crunch. But at the same time, it's a lot of times they push the deadline back, and then they delay it for three months, and then they just crunch for three more months. Right. You know. So I don't I don't know really what the solution is. Um, I think that. Like I, I'm really into all this stuff, right? You are too. You, you read all this stuff, but like, I'm just, I'm just thinking about like for the average person, like that doesn't, isn't up on all the news and stuff. You know, if they read that a game has been delayed and then they don't know why or anything like that, they just get upset or they don't know about crunch. A lot of people don't even know that crunch is a deal. So yeah, then, uh, like other than like they're thinking what captain. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Crunch berries, dude. Crunch berries all the way. When I get when I get Last of Us Two, it'll be all crunch berries. <laughs> this is Captain Crunch all berries. But like, okay, so like we understand that crunch is bad. Yeah. Um, but for somebody out there that doesn't even realize what crunch is, they just see the delay and they're like, why? You know. And then you can't like when you go like if they don't know about it, then you can't when you go to them with like. 
well, you know, they, they need the delay because it'll help these people not have to like work themselves into, into a coma because they have to <laughs> put in 60, 70 hour weeks to finish this game. Um, I think that most people would be like, oh, okay, that's cool. But I don't think that people are as tuned into how the industry works. So they just view it perfectly, you know, from a purely product standpoint. They're like, oh, well, the new iPhone got delayed. That sucks. It's like basically the same thing. You know, it's just a product to them. That'll never happen. They don't see how the sausage <laughs> is made. We'll say that. They, right. Well, I know it's not what you intended, that we were, but I'm just going to throw this in here. Just throw it. Phones are so expensive now, and that's one of the things that I had a hard time with for a long time. Was like, why is my phone like twelve hundred dollars? Mm-hmm. And it's like you don't see the immense amount of like development that goes into making a phone. Yeah, like when they ne- it's really complex. And uh, I mean, I just want to give a hand to Apple, like how you put out a new one every <laughs> year. Like, dude, it, it's incredible. Yeah, the, uh, the, the Call of Duty of phones. <laughs> Speaking of Call of Duty, yes, we're going to jump into this. Like, it's the, what's it called? Warzone? Oh, yeah. Okay. Like, so. I have not checked this out, but. We need I'll to, think. we need to do it mostly because it's free. Free things are great. Yeah. But I, I'm scared. Okay. Because I was a Call of Duty addict. Yeah. I had a huge problem back in Modern Warfare 3 mm-hmm. I, and Black Ops 2. Mm. actually to be fair with just not being able to put the game down for literally days at a time um so i i get scared but on the other hand i'm not a huge battle royale person so i don't think i'd have the problem being able to get out of it um but 30 million players in 10 days yeah 30 million players in 10 days the 15 million in three days if i was PUBG, i would be pissed no no i mean i i don't know okay they 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 serve different audiences no they made battle royale and now everyone is taking their idea and they're left with what where's their i mean it's getting it's shrinking smaller and smaller yeah because i mean i was talking about this with my friend the other day and i will forever love PUBG. um but it killed itself man Like it's killing itself because like just the other day. Okay. Another, I'm just going to toss this news out, but it's not a freaking news story. We don't need to talk about it, but it was like, I I, I'm scrolling through stuff the other day and I see that, uh, PUBG has a new fantasy based freaking game mode where like you have like hammers and stuff. (laughs) And like, I was just like, guys, how about you make it so that people don't drop game? How about you fix the cheating? How about you like make the game like stable for a bunch of people? Like all this stuff, they, the game I, hasn't worked properly for so long. You're losing to Fortnite because they're doing things constantly. You know, uh, here, the problem with the, like you can't have a, a a game like PUBG that doesn't work right. Okay, that has cheaters like that because yeah, you in like a normal death match. If I'm just getting into like old COD and I ran into a cheater, I'd be like, oh, you suck, man, and then I report him, and then join another lobby, and then two seconds later, I'm just killing stuff. But like with PUBG. You play 15, 20 minutes into a game and then you get killed by a dude and you're like, well, I don't know if that was lag, network lag. I don't know if that guy cheated, but I know I just wasted a half hour of my life to get just just beat by some BS, you know, and it's Uh, just it's just so dumb. Which is why we have to give a hand to Warzone for Call of Duty. Like you killed 50,000 cheaters and uh, I think policing cheaters. Mm. is very important i think they i mean i think they have more resources and like PUBG is made by a smaller company who's made a lot of money but they're still relatively new right and they haven't had like almost 20 years of working with huge shooters online like like cod has so like i would i would hope that activision's better at at you know moderate moderating cheaters but it's just another it's just another thing that warzone has over them too you know like yeah. the the engine works better the net code's better they're better at catching cheaters i don't know if i necessarily like the gameplay of warzone better i, have I haven't even seen it, anything yet yeah but like i, I mean we i played black ops 4 and i played blackout and i didn't enjoy it you know if it's more of the same then I mean, I mean, like, again, I'd have to play it to, but I'm so, 
I'm so in love with like the actual shooter engine that they have in PUBG that like I will always prefer to play that. But like when it comes down to it, I'm just sick of the aggravation yeah. of it. And I would, I'd be willing to play Warzone just based on the basis that it's free and that I just know it'll work. Right. If you're not, you're not worried about if people are cheating. Mm-hmm. I mean, and look at the number. 30 million people are playing and only 50,000. I don't, I can't do the math right off the top of my head, but right. that is a, such a small percentage of people. Well, right. And, so, and that sends, that sends a message like, just don't bother. And like 50,000 people, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> is I know. cheating really fun? No, I mean, I just, I don't know what people get out of it. I like I've never understood it. I've, I've done it in the past, by the way, back when I was playing, uh, Medal of Honor, Allied Assault and stuff. You throw in aim hacks just to mess with people or whatever. But it was like so not fun. Like, yeah. it, you know, I, I could kill people, but I felt like a douche. Right. You know, it'd be like, oh, look at my KD, but I'm having absolutely zero fun because there's no yeah. challenge. You know, it's just like, what do you get out of it? I don't understand. Back in the day, uh, red and blue, Pokemon red and blue. Mm-hmm. I used to cheat and get like, you know, a billion dollars. And then you're like, uh, and then you'd multiply your rare candies and stuff. And then you're like. Oh, I'm level 99 on all my Pokemon, but uh, did I have fun? No, it was like this is this is lame now. I'm going to I'm going to um I'm going to admit something that yeah. I'm not proud of. Okay. I've ha- I have used a cheat engine on Dark Souls. Oh, ow. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm bringing but it up. Like you said that in such a way that I'm like, I'm waiting for like the hammer to drop, and I'm like, oh, I, like I, I can't, tri- there are so many worse games. I punched a you- grandma. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, there it's are much such less severe. There are worse games to use a cheat engine on. That is not a surprise. It's a that's a Dark Look, Souls is hard. Like, but I, but taking away the ability to die or uh, like the challenge of it completely ruined the game i was like i just was like yeah i mean i'm getting to see all these bosses and stuff but it was just like just walking through the zones you know it was just like there was nothing to yeah. enjoy in it at all and i just can't imagine being somebody that plays you know Warzone and just like cheats just to what what's you, the point are you just like jacking up your gamer score or is it about like achievements or like something i have no idea it's a mentality I, I can't grasp. I don't get it. The, yeah. the, the fun in games is playing the games that they intended, like the way they intended it to be played. Like yeah. I don't, the, the, there's a weird thing. Like we play games, basically a game really is you are given a limited set mm-hmm. of possibilities. And yeah. like you'd think that if someone just took the limits off that that would be what is fun. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to play a game, you want the the strictures of life to be thrown off, mm-hmm. getting all philosophical on you. Oh, throw it. <laughs> but the reality... Grab my strictures and just, just rip them off, Mitch. <laughs> but, but, like, what we actually impose rules upon ourselves when we play games. Like, every any board game you play, any video game you play, there's rules. And the existence of those rules actually make it fun. It's well, what's fun. I mean, that's the whole... Like, that's what created PUBG as a genre. You know, like, that's what... <laughs> it's it's just... I mean, it's just COD, right? But then they, they tweak some settings and change the rules. And, and it's now a it's a completely game. different thing, you know? Yeah. The the rules help make things fun. Yeah. You know, and unique. Absol- yeah. And absolutely. if you're just gonna... You know, like, what... If you're gonna cheat in games, then what's the difference between playing COD and PUBG? Like, there is none. Because none. you're just... Yeah. You're just aimbotting people in the face and then you win like this who cares you know there's you're missing the entire experience of it um, just i think everyone should take note like streamline the process of reporting people who are cheating mm-hmm. make make that easier and enforce i think that they need to really just like be more transparent and like how they decide who to who to yeah cuz they're that's another cause, problem yeah like i mean Part of the thing that discourages me from reporting people in games is like, I have no idea if it's working. Well, you don't want to, like, you hope that they investigate, that you don't just go report this guy and then they just ban him. Mm -hmm. It's like, I I hope that you're going to look at what I'm showing you. Well, I think that, like, they have to be kind of like, 
they have to stop people from trolling too. You right. know, because then you just play against people that just report everybody just to be dicks. And then everybody gets banned and you're like, well, why did I get banned? Because some guy said that you were doing this thing. And you're like, well, I wasn't, but I'm now banned and I have to not play my game now because somebody's just trolling. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure they have to, like, look. But it, you're right. There they needs do, to be but they're, definite guidelines. I think that their guidelines are, like, very extreme, like, you know, like personal harassment and threats yeah. and, like, repeated stuff and, like, just, like, you know griefing where they're just like team killing and stuff like that it's got to be like repeated behavior like extremely bad for them to do anything yeah and like you have to have the evidence because people paid 60 bucks for this game and then somebody spuriously you know reports them for something if you ban somebody you're basically just taking like their 60 bucks away yeah it's a, it, that's a good burden, way to make people never want to buy your games again the burden of proof is on the state i plead the fifth <laughs> I plead the fifth. I plead the fifth. I, I wish I could do the, the, the glass thing with my monster can. <laughs> um, instead of all the amendments of the Constitution <laughs> of the of United, United States, States of America. Of America. <laughs> I said I can only choose one. Okay, like 10-year-old references. <laughs> Dude. If people don't know that <laughs> reference, they need to, though. Like, if they're like, what are they talking about? You've officially helped them greatly if they even look into it in the slightest. Um, so, one, two, three, four, fifth. Fifth. <laughs> I guess since we talked about uh, Doom and now we're talking about COD, um, a thing I just wanted to bring up is like, do you feel like we're in a shooter renaissance right now? And when I, uh, let me, fr- let me frame it because. I know that when people hear this kind of stuff where you like take a big word that means a lot, that's like really good. Like this is a renaissance. You know, they go like, Oh, come on. These ga-. then they play them like, like tear down the games that you're talking about and make you, make you see that they're just the same as they've always been and stuff like that. But what I'm talking about specifically is like right now we're in a, in an air, in a time where like I can remember back in the day where it was, and it wasn't too long ago either where if if it wasn't battlefield or cod it it didn't matter like those two things dominated the shooter oh yeah i remember the shooter conversation and it wasn't like it wasn't like those other games didn't exist and they didn't sell or that they didn't um get coverage or anything but it was like they were always in the shadow of uh, i'll put it this way there there were games that were out at the time that i thought deserved a lot more attention at the time yeah I don't even remember what they are anymore. Oh, yeah, I know. I can go back and just, like, uh, all the COD clones, like, I know there's a bunch of them. Some of them are probably pretty good, but I couldn't name them no. at all. That's what I mean. Like, everybody, everything lived in the shadow of COD and Battlefield. It was like, well, if you can't play with these big boys, then it's like, I mean, good job. Wait, thanks for trying, guy. But, like, now, <laughs> now, you know, it's not that COD isn't at the top and, like, the Battlefield games aren't also still a thing. It's not like those things don't exist anymore. It's just like now, now all these other things that can't exist alongside them and actually have an audience and all that stuff. Like, like right now we've got modern warfare just came out last year. Still, it was reviewed really well. People played it online. Then you get this war zone mode. 30 million people are playing it. It's just insane. And then, and then they just uh, out of the blue announced the Modern Warfare Two remastered campaign, and it just just comes out just randomly. They didn't announce it at all. It was just like he, this is coming out tomorrow, and then it just dropped. So, like, I think from a standpoint, like we have the most COD that we have ever had at one time, just existing. Right between like how many people? I don't know if in terms of how many people are playing it, but like. You take 30 million people on top of the last year's sales plus this new game. I mean, if that if that's how... Okay. If how you're framing it is that in times past, they're, like everyone's had to exist in Call of Duty's shadow. And I'm going to even say like Battlefield was up there, but even they were in Call of Duty's shadow. Yeah, they still oh, existed oh, in their shadow for sure. Yeah. A little bit, yeah. Um, those were just the two heavy hitters. If that's how you're framing it, I still think that's a lot of the way it is uh, it's still that way because titanfall 2 deserves yeah. to be bigger than it is oh yeah i mean I, there's still games that are going to get overlooked but i'm saying that like you're seeing fortnite PUBG, um 
you know, both of the dooms like Metro last year, there's right. just, there's just so many shooters out there that right now that can like actually exist alongside it that people can actually talk about. Like, that I feel they're like, aware of. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, I mean, think of how many people are playing apex, you know, yeah. think of how many people are playing Fortnite. It's not just, uh, let's not forget overwatch. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just COD and then everybody else. It's like, it's still COD like way up there, but there's more, there's more stuff that's like dominating the conversation alongside of it. Do you think that's because everyone wants to crap on Call of Duty now? I mean, I don't know. I think people have wanted to crap on Call of Duty for like the better part of the decade. Whether they've been able to do it, I don't know. I don't think it's... uh, I just think that we're getting some really good shooters right now, you know? Yeah. And it's just bizarre because like they... It kind of it didn't come out of nowhere, but it's just like I don't know if they maybe didn't learn the right lessons until recently, to where it was like we're not going to be because because in the early 2010s it was everybody was making COD clones. They were just trying to be like COD, right? But now all the successful shooters are just doing their own thing. Maybe hopefully this is a lesson that they that developers can can learn here that. We don't want to see the same things over mm. and over and over again. People do want to get your spin on it. And that's a good thing. Do your own thing. Yeah. I mean, I mean they, it's, it's weird because like they all feel like this, their own little niches a little bit. Yeah. Where like, you know, if you want like a classic arena shooter, you can play the new Doom. If you want, you know, uh, Battle Royales, you've got many options. And if you want COD, you can play COD. And it's like. None of them are stopping one another from being successful. It's cool. It's like pe- people are willing to branch out and say that I'm not just going to play COD yeah. all, all the time. Like, I don't, I'm not just going to play COD all year. I, mean, I can play these other things. I think definitely some of the pull that Call of Duty had and Battlefield was that you knew that there was a group playing. Because mm-hmm. the last thing you want to do is you jump in and there's no community to back you up. You you, yeah. you wait half an hour to play a game more. Mm-hmm. And then people drop out, and you need enough players to populate. And so, if you want to go to the try and true, tried and true, yeah, yeah, that's and, that's. I mean, I, I I hate. There's there's nothing worse than like playing a shooter that like you really like that just you just watch the community just dwindle away. Yeah, that's and you're like, that's what happened to me with Titanfall two, mm-hmm. Titanfall two, the both of them one and two were probably my favorite shooters for a while because they like the way they do the parkour and the wall running and just the having the Titans. It's such a, like I thought it was such a revolutionary idea Mm -hmm. and uh, like there's no better feeling than walking around as a person and taking out a Titan just, you know? Oh yeah, man. Uh, I mean, I haven't played two. I haven't played two, but I did play the first Titanfall. I still, I still have the, uh, Still have the disc somewhere. Yeah. And, <clears throat> but, but dude, that. And I just watched the community. Now I go to jump on and it's like, yeah, half, 45 minutes, mm-hmm. an hour. Yeah. Before I can find a match. Mm-hmm. And then like you have, no matter what's happening in game, you can't back out because you know, you'll just be waiting. So if you're with a jerk, you just have to deal. And I think that like, I think that's like a game like CSGO is still really, really popular because of that. Where you like people keep buying it because you know that people are going to be playing it. Right. You know, it's like up there on the top played games in Steam every time. So like when you go to it and you you can see like, okay, people are playing this game. I'm not going to buy it and then just be like searching for people to play with. And no, you know, you'll be right into a match. Yeah. So so I I, I do think that's probably where Call of Duty got dominance. Mm -hmm. And but it is it is nice now to see that the communities are branching out and that's probably because people are realizing that community can be there. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I think that, I think that there's a lot more, there's a lot more variation in that genre. And like once people decided to stop chasing COD and started trying to do their own things, then those things became popular because they're offering something different. Right. Yeah. It's like, it's like I'm, you know, like if I go and play, if I go and turn on my PS4, I can bet that six or seven Sony exclusives are all third-person action games, but they all do something different, right? So that they don't, I don't feel like I'm playing 
another third person action game or whatever. I'm playing Bloodborne. I'm playing Uncharted. I'm playing God of War. I'm playing Spider-Man. Like the things that they do are all different so that they don't like shoot each other in the foot. Right. You know? Yeah. Okay. So I think we've done a decent amount of games discussion. There's many more things that we could talk about, but I think we should get into some TV talk or maybe some movie talk, something, something non game related for the moment. So, um, I know we've both been watching devs. Oh dude. Um, I've been trying to catch up on Saul, uh, better call Saul. The fifth season's currently out right now. So I'm, you know, trying to binge through it while we're all quarantined inside. Um, and then of course the, uh, the cute de gras, which is tiger King. (laughs) (laughs) Those are, those are the three things that have been, uh, mostly dominating my, uh, viewing time. Oh, at future man. Have you watched Uh, any future man? I have not. Dude. Dude, Okay. Okay. I actually want to start with, uh, tiger King. Okay. You want to start with tiger King? Yeah. Let's just, let's just get it out of the way first. I, I did. Uh, so that was my homework was what I was supposed to go and watch. And <laughs> I'm the worst teacher of all time. <laughs> Could you imagine if like you came home with that homework as a kid and your parents would be giving me like a very strongly worded letter right now? Yeah, that would be, that would be really bad. Dude, my mom actually does have a letter for you. Um, really? No, not really. Damn it. <laughs> I've wanted like an old fashioned lettery letter letter. <laughs> I, I can, I can do that for you. If you would like to get all our, Oh like, dude, you should have Eileen make it in uh, uh, not, not acrylic calligraphy. Yeah. Like I'll mail, I'll just mail you the show notes every, every week. Like, you <laughs> can you like, can you like crinkle up the, like you remember when you were in, in your like middle school and they taught you how to make a piece of paper look like old and stuff. Yeah, crinkle it you up, crinkle use it up tea and bag. use the lighter and stuff. Oh, you'd yeah, use the yeah, tea bag. Yeah. Yeah. See, so we, they'd tell us to burn the edges and stuff. So it looked like, you know, like worn. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I have no idea what we're talking about. Yeah, Tiger we King. Went, like, okay. way off topic. <laughs> <laughs> you remember art class in middle school? <laughs> okay. Was it so, so my art class is taught by Joe Exotic? I'm a freak. <laughs> Okay, I I watched half of the first episode. Half like, of the first? Yeah. Oh, God. I couldn't, like, so I got the wrong idea of what it was going to be. Mm-hmm. I thought it was going to be, like, along the lines of, like, the Kardashians or um, yeah, like yeah. one of the shows where it was, like, actually following these people around. Mm-hmm. And then I realized, oh, this is, a this is like, a true crime. Yeah, yeah. And, like, that actually made me want to watch it more because, I, like, I was so eye-rolly over it before. Mm-hmm. But it's like, it's so over the top. Like, I love my cats. So, <laughs> the weird thing is like, like I was telling you about it the last time we talked about it, right? Is that it's a, it's a documentary. Yeah. True. Like basically a true, a true crime documentary, but like the resolution of it, like just happened last year, but then, Oh yeah. Like recently, like, like the, the, the ending of it is like so close to where the 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 release date is that like you just I, I it didn't dawn on me how close the wrap of the show production wise had to have been to the release date and so it's it's really weird because you're like oh when did this happen oh it just happened but then they also have like all this footage from so so much footage from forever ago it's like it makes you feel like it's something that's happened a long time ago yeah it actually just happened yeah i i don't know if i want to watch it because it's just so <sighs> it's maddening dude what is maddening about it is it because like he gets away with stuff he shouldn't or no or is it no maddening because no. it's like what, it's what? maddening because these people are stupid these people are so dumb. They're the worst. They're so, <laughs> oh man, they're the worst people. Like uh, all the other, you know, Joe Exotic runs this, for anybody that doesn't know, Tiger King is about Joe Exotic and he runs a uh, tiger farm that's also like basically like a glorified petting zoo. Um, like Shaq showed up one time. They, there's footage of Shaq there. What? Yeah. And oh my goodness. I people to, people I tweet I have to watch people it. People tweeted at Shaq after they watched this, like, how could you do that? How could you go and hang out with tigers? And he's like, I won't hang out with tigers no more. <laughs> but but um Oh man, sorry. My Shaq impression. That was bad. <laughs> God I love it. Um so he he runs this zoo and then there's all these other people that are like also in the tiger business that also suck. 
they're just the worst <laughs> and they just spend the whole time talking about like themselves versus like the animal rights people and that's basically the whole center of the show um this the conflict between the conflict them. between them and like how messed up their lives are and like all the stuff that keeps getting in the way it's i can it, completely understand if you don't want to finish it like i i get it I don't know. I just don't know if it's like going to go like over the top into like stupid crap or if it's just the fact that they're dumb, that it's just that they're dumb because I can handle that they're dumb. But if it's going to be like, it's just like baffling decisions, you know, and like the, there, there are people that surround the, the main people in the series that you just like want to pull your hair out of like, how are these people going along with this? At what, how did they decide at some point in their life that this is what they were going to do? You know, it's kind of one well, of those things where like the you're, one thing, the one guy that I saw, it was like, it's because he was a like a meth addict and he was like, this was better than being addicted to meth. Yeah. Well, OK, so that was one of the things is like they would Joe Exotic would find these people that, you know, just had nothing. And he would specifically target these people. So because like. He thought that they didn't have anything else to lose, so they wouldn't screw him over. Oh, or it was so kind that's of like part of the- I'm going to give you like some redemption here, kind of, you know, like I'll throw you a, fun, a final bone or whatever. In in a way, that's noble. In a way, it's noble, but he was also doing it so that he could just not have to pay him very much. That's it was scummy. one of those things where like yeah, they wouldn't get paid crap, dude. And, and like uh, the weird thing is like I I disliked the other, um, I can't remember his name right now, but there's there's another like heavier set um yeah tiger uh zoo owner the and polygamist yeah he's the polygamist and that guy made me so much more infuriated than regular old joe exotic like just just because he has like this whole like the polygamy thing and like this cult following and he like doesn't pay these people jack yeah you know and you just see like the millions that this guy's probably worth and you see like how he doesn't get pisses sh- you off he just doesn't give a shit about anybody else yeah. you know it ugh, i don't know Okay. Maybe I'll watch it and we'll put this on the back bur- this discussion on the back burner. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's for you. I just don't It's it's I like it's true pretty crime. Yeah, but it's still it's like still it's like really trashy. I know? don't mind. I don't mind trash. I watch Making a Murderer. Okay. <laughs> All right, then I maybe you'll like it. <laughs> Making a Murderer was brilliant. I haven't and, seen that. Dude, uh, it's good. There's uh, this is the problem. I wish I was on quarantine all the time because then I'd actually watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. I, it wasn't meant to be part of our topic, and it is kind of old. But I will talk about m- making a murderer for a minute mm-hmm. because, like, yeah, fill me in. When I like, there was part of me growing up that wanted to be a lawyer, and like I realized, like logistically, that that's probably not going to ever happen for me. Yeah, um, money and time. It, it just. I mean, maybe one day. You never know internet, <clears throat> but, uh, <laughs> you're going to be uh, Saul Goodman. You're going to do the, uh, <laughs> the law courses while you're in the mail room. That would be a good segue if we were ready for it, but I know. not yet. <clears throat> um, no, but w- watching making a murderer did made like it infuriated me to a point where it was like, I ha- I have to be a lawyer. I, I have to do this mm-hmm. because like, I'm very passionate about defending people. Like, I don't care if you're one of the people that thinks he was guilty or not guilty. The things that they did to put him behind bars, the lengths they went to, the evidence they ignored, it, it's scummy. Yeah, ends justifying the means kind of stuff. Yeah. Where you're like, yeah. no, that's not, this. those means right. don't justify it, yeah. It, it, it made me furious. Like, I, you know, literally get up and punch a brick wall break mm-hmm. your freaking hand piss you off yeah um so it's a good show and if you if you want to be pissed off right now you can go and watch it <laughs> so what was just tell me what the what the basis of the case was about because i may have watched this there's something there's another like show that was like a following of a case yeah that we watched um so i'm not gonna it's about a guy that Stephen avery allegedly killed his wife no. Okay, then I haven't seen this. Okay. Uh, he was accused. He was wrongfully accused at one point of raping a woman. Uh-huh. Then they ended up finding out who actually did it, and he was acquitted. And then the the state actually had to pay him, or like the county, 
I think I think it was the county had to pay him a ton of money. Uh-huh. And then he never moved, which everybody anybody out there who's got something like that going on, mm-hmm. don't stay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, like, okay, like, do you stay or do you move and then people think that you're even guiltier because you're moving? You know, like, I, I, look, it allowed them the access to his life to screw him again. And that's like, regardless of whether you think that's what happened, like, you wouldn't want to be around the same cops that locked you up wrongfully. The first time. Yeah, no, yeah, okay, that makes sense, yeah. You know what I mean? It's all the same guys. They didn't quit, mm-hmm. you know? They didn't move on. They didn't move. Get the hell out of there. Yeah. What are you doing? Well, anyway, he ends up being accused of murdering a reporter who, well, not a reporter per se, uh, a photographer for that car magazine everyone's got. What is it? Uh, Hot Rod. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, it's like the ones with the, like the local. Ones are there booby are there booby models on the front or not? No, <laughs> damn. <laughs> no, like car and car. And car and, and driver. driver. No, nah. It's like the local. It's not important. She came by to take pictures of the car that he was selling, mm-hmm. and then she went missing. Oh, okay. And it's like, oh well, you already have a history, except so like you're a prime suspect, but he wasn't guilty of the previous case, so it has no bearing. On yeah. whether or not he's guilty now. Yeah. And so like automatically it's like you're looking at him with more suspicion. You would anyone else just because he was involved with the case before, except that, we, that he was acquitted of. Yeah. Right. Except he wasn't involved in the case before. That's the whole friggin' point. Yeah. And so just right off the bat, it like pisses you off. And that, mm-hmm. that, the whole thing is his, uh, I don't want to like get too far down the rabbit hole here, but, that's yeah, right. his, his like nephew or whatever gets locked up too, and like so, making a murderer follows both of them as they're trying to appeal the case, and it's uh, it'll piss you right off. All right, I'm gonna have to <laughs> check it out, dude. Yeah, I want, I want to, <clears throat> I want to get into more of that stuff. Like it's, it's cool to watch like certain things like that because it's like like uh, it's a survi- it satisfies <clears throat> a different itch. You know, yeah. I guess like you can watch yeah. like a scripted drama, and then a comedy, and like some documentary all at the same time, and it I feels like to spread different. out. Yeah. yeah. I want to get into talking about devs um, a little bit because it's <laughs> it's the newest thing that I've w- I've been watching. Um, it's, Absolutely, it's currently still premiering. Um, it's on Hulu on or FX on Hulu right now, so it doesn't. I don't think it actually airs on on FX. I think it's just premiering on Hulu. I don't know how that works, to be completely honest. Yeah, I don't know either. But, but I've definitely been watching that one uh, since you recommended it to me last week. Okay. And what do you think? Uh, f- first, before we get into it, uh, spoilers. We're gonna we're just gonna get into it. I, I mean, I can give you a brief. Well, how about we give like a brief summary of what the show's about for I people don't... that aren't familiar, and then we can get into spoilers afterwards. So, if people want to stop listening after the description, feel free. You can skip ahead. Yeah. Um, so, um, what's it about? I mean, um, this. What well, what does she do? She's a develop like. No, well, she's she's a software engineer. Yeah, the, the, working for a company called Amaya, mm-hmm. and uh, Ron Swanson is uh, <laughs> the president of the company. Yeah, um, Jordan. Mm, is, is that R- in? Nick Nick Oferman? No, no, no. I mean the name of his character. Oh no, Forrest. Forrest is his name. Yeah, Forrest is his name. Lily is the the girl. Yeah, who is I don't remember her name. Um, hang on. I actually, yeah, we had it. Uh, we had it somewhere, but whatever. Well, yeah, moving on. Uh, basically, I mean, is it really spoilers if it happens in the first episode? No, I think that I think that it happens you can, early in the first episode. Yeah, I think that you can just her her boyfriend goes missing. Right. Okay. And yeah. and she's tr- like the show is about her investigating the goings on at the tech company mm-hmm. and his disappearance, and she thinks that they are involved. Mm-hmm. And that's really like it's so in depth that you can't really go beyond that without giving anything away. Yeah, I think that there's certain things about it that like I don't know if they're necessarily spoilery. Like uh, I would say that like okay, her her boyfriend goes missing in the first episode, and he goes to the uh, he goes to do a presentation for the for Forrest, who's the the uh, 
the guy that owns Amaya and Katie is, is like right hand <laughs> woman or something like that, who basically she's like, I don't know. She's like the senior person at devs, I guess. Yeah. And devs is like a certain part of their, their company that like nobody can see. So like right yeah. off the bat, you're like, okay, it's kind of shrouded in secrecy and they don't really tell you what it's about, but they mention quantum computing. So you would assume that it has something to do with it. But then Forrest is like, you know, he, he basically says like, it's nothing like you've, you would even imagine basically. And then you like get into it from there. So, yeah. Should we just launch into spoiler? Yeah, talk? sure. I don't see why not. Go ahead. Okay. So this is the opportunity. If you don't want to know, uh, <clears throat> Jump out now. Um, yeah, we're going to spoil the whole series up through now. They're yep. still premiering new episodes, but this is basically yep. where we're at at this point. And hopefully you're gone now. <laughs> um, hopefully you come back. <laughs> yeah, please come back. Oh, thank God they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, dude. I want to you have did you figure out where you left off because I don't want to go further than where you're at. Um so I left off like I'm I have watched everything so you can just tell me the last thing you saw. The last thing that I remember seeing was it was the episode where um dude shows up to intimidate um her her ex-boyfriend. Yeah. Um Jamie she comes into and he comes in to intimidate that guy, and then I made it to the episode after that. I think that might be current. Okay, okay, okay. So I've seen to where Jamie rescues uh, Lily from the really poorly secured yeah okay. facility. Is <laughs> what like, like facility? Just like hops up to the window. He's like, "Come on, get out of here!" <laughs> like Clarissa explains it all. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, dude. Good. Um, that's a nice <laughs> reference. Uh, so <laughs> what kind of psych place can you just open up a window from outside? Yeah, that was, I turned and then you can carry out a drugged female, even if, like she's really tiny. So like, you can't yeah. imagine she'd weigh that much, but still you're going to carry this part. He'd have to carry her yeah. over his shoulder and walk away. <laughs> just like go to his car, like throws her in the trunk, uh, yeah. drives away. Nobody sees this. Yeah. Where are their cameras? Where is the security at? Um, and yeah. the doors in a psych facility. Think about this. The windows aren't like secured somehow. It seemed like like this really upscale place, which is super bizarre because you're like talking about like this shady billion dollar company that wants to keep this stuff secret at all costs and then they're just like yeah we'll just send her to the comfy place with the first floor windows yeah or does it make sense because they're a really high-end tech firm and so they can afford the really and I, then they're that those upscaly places are the places that keep it quiet i guess i guess if you look at it from like are they trying to project outward to like if anybody were to catch a wind you wouldn't you know you exactly, want it to be like we're whole, taking care of her kind of thing. the whole idea was that they were trying to make her make sure that everyone knew she was crazy and therefore you can't believe what anything she says well right but then if you show that you're also mistreating her and putting her in some crappy place or whatever then you exactly know. So, so they want yeah. the big place that, okay okay i can i can yeah. i can deal with that but i don't know where we were heading from there <laughs> okay so um after the first episode, you know that Kenton kills Jamie. Yes. So you know that Devs is involved in the whole process. The mystery through the show up until the point that you saw is what is Devs really doing? Like you, you see yeah. that it's a quantum computer that's really incredibly powerful, but you have no idea what their end goal is. And uh, Well, you know what Forrest's end goal is, kind of, right? Like, like his whole motivation is like he wants to see his daughter again, I guess. But it's not really clear from their discussion if like because Katie and him have this discussion about about Amaya that mm -hmm. makes you wonder is is he trying to bring her back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't think he is. No, I don't think so either. I think that like. I think that the the mystery surrounding the technology is more about um like I don't I never thought that it was like they were trying to bring her back, I would say. I, he's I, trying to look into the inputs in the universe to see that he can rid himself of guilt. Yeah, yeah. There's was, nothing mm -hmm. I could have done differently and so I can just let it go. Mm -hmm. 
That's the whole point. He wants to be able to put in every inf- input in the entire universe. Yeah. Into this computer just to absolve himself of the guilt. And Katie calls him out on it. Yeah. Too. She's just like, I know what you're do- I know why you're doing this and you're not doing it for anything except self ab- right. uh, you know, <clears throat> absolution basically. And like that kid, I don't remember the name of the character, but the little kid that was working on it who they say that he's 18 at one point and I'm like, dude, no. He's like the, 5. The guy that gets fired? Yeah. Oh, that's a that's a woman. What? Yep. I Eileen had to explain this to me too because like I just saw I saw the short haircut and no makeup and you know, I was just it like It sounds like a boy. I know. I know, but she looked it up and it's it's a, it's a woman that plays that character and it's it's a girl in the show. It's really weird. I I for the whole time I was watching it, I was just thought it was like some they were going for like the teenage boy genius. Yeah, that's thing. what it looked like. Yeah. Okay. Well, that changes everything. So there you go. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, the biggest mind-blowing uh, reveal of the season. <laughs> yeah. uh, if only. Um, dude, this... Sh- I know we're like on the spoiler bit and we're talking about everything and that's fine. But like, can we just talk about like the art? The, 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 the cinematography is just incredible. Yeah. The soundtrack, like ice in your veins all the time mm-hmm. intent and like just every every bit it's kind of okay <clears throat> vince gilligan okay better call saul mm-hmm. and uh breaking bad is a master at showing you the most mundane and it you know ordinary life and just have like something about the way that he does it with the shots and the way everything builds it's just tension. Yeah. Stress. The whoever I didn't like devs mm-hmm. does that. Yeah. The director was the guy that directed Ex Machina. Okay. Which I thought was an awful movie. Actually. I, hadn't, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, it was but I mean, like I, I know that he was like pretty like revered for that. Not revered, but like people like that movie. Yeah. And he did something else too. I can't remember what he did. But he, um, yeah, he's he's like a filmmaker, and this is his first like TV series, I guess. Well, um, kudos, because it's it, dude, the just the mastery of the tension. Like, mm-hmm. I think that I think what you're talking about with like the soundtrack is like it's weird because that really sticks with me too. It's just like I feel like that soundtrack makes that show. Oh yeah, I, I think if you did anything else, it probably wouldn't be nearly the. And I have to see the next part. I'll say that I have found myself annoyed by the soundtrack at certain points because it does stay on that very similar, like it, it's almost Gregorian. Yeah. Kind of, it's, like, and it does that so much that you're kind of like, okay, everything can't be this serious. Like, you know, like everything can't be this mind blowing, but you know, like they're going for like that, that like epic otherworldly soundtrack. And like at some yeah. point I was like, all right, I got it. You know, <laughs> But it's, I, I think they're they're aiming for, I think I know what you mean. Like whenever they're in that room mm-hmm. with the computer, that's where it's kind of overplayed to me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. To me, it was like they're trying to make like the, they're trying to make the technology of it like more epic than it really. Because like, because for me, like I feel like the execution of this show is what is so special about it. More than like what it's actually about. Oh, because I, I feel agree. like I've I've seen plenty of media that tackles like what this sh- the themes that this show tries to tackle. Right. I just think that it's kind of like what you're talking about with Animal Crossing. It's like uh, more than the sum of its parts. You know, it, like puts Absolutely. everything together in such a good way. It's probably if you took a, if you stripped away some of its components. And just looked at the content of the show itself. Yeah, it probably would be like, eh, you know, it's okay. Well, like the thing with for- the thing with Forest, right? I, I I have like the weirdest parallel, is that you've it, Neon Genesis Evangelion. Yeah, which I yeah. Have you seen it? I've seen some, okay. but I never finished it, and I never like I never, I never gave it a shot. Okay, because I I know you're going somewhere with this, but real quick. There's a point in the show where he like sits in a chair and cries for like forever. Uh-huh. And I was like, I can't get past this guy being like a whiny little like beetle. Like, like, yeah. 
Or we, we're talking about <laughs> we're talking about Evangelion. Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. There's, I mean, it's kind of cringy in certain points, but it's also like a '90s anime, like. You know. But it's like it's like super emo, and I'm like, okay, little, little yeah, tiny, like <clears throat> get over it. Everything okay. that happens is a scream fest where he's like, I have to do this, <laughs> my father. <laughs> <You know. laughs> Yeah, no, I get it. I, yeah. I, I've tried to show Eileen the show a, co- a couple times, and I'm like, you know, it's it's another thing where like sometimes you have to move past little things. And sometimes there are a lot of anime like that. Sometimes I see a piece of media that I really like, and I just understand why people would hate it. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah. Um, but <clears throat> I felt like the driving force of Forrest, like I've seen in Evangelion, because like he's, you know, there's like a mysterious thing happening that he's in charge of that he's using for his own selfish means to like help him because he's has this pain because of a relative that he's lost or like it's in this case it's his daughter but like in evangelion like the whole purpose of their whole thing is so that uh shinji's dad can like restart the world because his his wife's dead you know yeah so he's trying to restart humanity so that he can like get his wife back or something like that it's it's he's doing it for entirely selfish reasons so like i I, when i saw it i was like i i've seen this parallel before and also like with the um with the plot of its show it's like the the themes of the show itself it's like um you know like determinism and fate and all that stuff and like what is the nature well, of reality and that, stuff that's where i was going the little kid co- like comes in that's now apparently a girl oh we're we're good we're good okay the girl is, that gets fired she's all she wrecked his whole plan by pr- basically proving that there is a multiverse yeah and that you know his whole idea for the whole project has just beca- been rendered null and void if indeed that's what he was going for. Well, I think he's and, tied to like <clears throat> he's tied to the idea that I can't re- he like explains it away in some way. I can't remember by still having yeah, right. He tr- well he says like this is why your results don't matter and this is what I'm concerned with and then get the hell out, you know, and I just forget what he Well, no, cuz the the whole thing is he's ignoring that the re- the meaning of what the results mean. Mm-hmm. If he plugged in those inputs and got, because he was dealing with sound, and he was able to actually make the sound come back mm-hmm. from. Basically, he proved that Forrest Forrest is just in denial in that part. Yeah, from my interpretation. Yeah, he's yeah, trying, he, he he's trying to say that it doesn't matter, but it does, because mm-hmm. the math ends up working, and if the math works, that means it's true. Mm-hmm. Obvi- like. So, I forget where I was going with that. I feel like he was trying to say, like, it doesn't but, matter what happens in the multiverse because this is the verse that we live in, kind well, of maybe. thing. Maybe. Maybe you're right. But also, like, then I don't understand, like, what he was trying to prove then. You know, like, exactly. Yeah. His whole proof was that there's nothing I could have done different. But if the multiverse exists, then that there are a number there of decisions you could have made. Mm hmm. But is that part of the ter- determinism? Determ- I don't know. Cause I think is that, that part of it that I'm sorry. No, you're good. That the fact that he is in that particular verse universe mean that he couldn't have made another decision because that's the decision he makes in that universe. In every universe, he has to make a different choice because right. that's how it works. Mm-hmm. So as long as he's in this one, he couldn't have done anything different. Right, yeah, I was just going to say, like, it, it, it doesn't matter what happened in these multiverses, because even if somebody, even if he in the, in a different universe did a different thing and a different result happens, that doesn't mean that you could then say, well, if I would have done that in this universe, it, the same thing would have happened. But that renders his entire, right. it still makes it all moot. Right, but he doesn't want to hear that, you know, because then that, I, I don't know, I don't know what he's looking for then, because, like, if he's looking for, I think to he's be, in denial. I, but if he's looking to be absolved from the guilt, that wouldn't wouldn't buying into that mean that then he is right? I think I would think because that like, means that his motives are still unclear because then maybe that's not what he's aiming for. Maybe 
Maybe. And that's why we keep watching the show, I guess. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully they what, explain it. Maybe they don't. Maybe they just leave it up to interpretation. What makes Forrest interesting to me is that Nick Offerman is a boss. Yeah. Like, you will never be able to look back at Ron Swanson the same way ever again. Mm-hmm. And, like, I had no idea that this guy could act. Like, you know that he's not Ron Swanson in real life. Like, you know that he's acting for that. But that's not, like, I don't think that's the most difficult role to act. No, I mean, like, he does, like, Ron Swanson basically talks and acts like Nick Nick Offerman. But, like, in a... Over-the-top man. In an over-the-top way yeah like it's it just takes it, it changes this whole actual outlook or whatever but right. like he still sounds like ron swanson when he's just like talking about other stuff right whereas this is like this man can act mm-hmm. holy crap this guy can act yeah I've, i was really impressed because like i wasn't sure how i would be able to like uh, when they're <clears throat> when they first meet with sergey and they're in and it's just like his first scene yeah I was sitting there the whole time just like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be able to see not Ron Swanson. And then they take it to a place where they make him do something that you've never seen him do before in terms of acting. I mean, I haven't seen like all of Nick Offerman's freaking filmography or whatever. But from what I've seen, you know, they they take it to a place where he's never been in my eyes. And then you just like completely bought in at that point. Oh, yeah. Like the hook is in Mm -hmm. for his character alone. I'm in this show. What do you think of? uh What do you think of Lily? Do you like her as a character? I didn't at first. Mm -hmm. I thought it was poor acting. Okay. But then like I started realizing like that's her, that's her character is the aloof kind of like, it doesn't seem like she's feeling. Yeah. And the reason I can kind of, I can kind of, maybe I can uniquely see her as a believable character because I, my sister's kind of the same way. That mm-hmm. kind of like, it doesn't matter what you tell her. She's kind of out there, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so it made her believable to me. Like once I realized, oh, this is just who she is. Like I was like, okay, so she can act. This is the character that she's playing. And so I I, I still like it. It kind of fits with her role, you know? Because yeah. I, I feel like all, I feel like some... I don't, I'm conflicted on how I like, like view her because so many times we have, like there'll be characters that get into like the kind of situations that she's in where it's just like they overact it. Right. Where they're just like, you you just have them like crying and screaming and angry like the whole time. And then it becomes like kind of one note where they're always at like 11 in terms of like their response where she's she's more, she's like, she's, she's understated all the time, all the time. Yeah. And when she like isn't understated, it's like, you know, it stands out, but I felt like they could have made her a bit more interesting, but I, I feel like that's the point. I really do. I think that's supposed to be her character. Oh yeah. I mean, I feel like they, she's definitely acting how they want. They wrote her, but I feel like they could have written her to be a little more interesting, I guess. Like, I don't know. I feel like they could have made her emote a little more because she does feel like kind of, she's like a, she's like a rock. Mm hmm. <clears throat> But I think unlike, I think she's like an onion. I think as the show goes on, we're going to see more layers. Yeah. I am, I'm hoping at least. Yeah. I mean, and they do kind of go into like her upbringing. Yeah. And it does seem <clears throat> kind of like she was supposed to not be super emotional as a kid. Yeah. Like, or maybe that her like parents weren't super uh, uh, emotional with her. Like maybe she's just kind of closed off. Yeah. I guess. And she did have like tragedy with her dad right like her dad died when she was young young like, yeah. so like yeah. there's definitely like trauma that they allude to that maybe would make her a little on un- that un- way i don't want to say unfeeling but at least outwardly looking a like little bit closed unfeeling. off yeah 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 what about uh jamie i think he's a compelling character me too i i and i can relate in some ways mm-hmm. i think and yeah the, I, I think uh I like that the, at some point the show called him out for like what we perceived his motivations to be whenever he's meeting with the, the security guy. What's his name? It starts with a K. 
Kenton. Uh, Kenton. Whenever uh, Kenton comes into his uh, his apartment. And it's basically just like, you know, I know she's got you around her finger, basically like, yeah, yeah, this is, you're hoping to get something out of this and stuff. And you're just like, kind of like waiting to see, like, as you're watching and you, you see that he's like more motivated by like possibly what this means for him after this whole thing. Right. Um, you're kind of like, you're kind of anticipating that whole, like where the, where the reality of her situation and his like want to help her, like where you're going to see a breaking or bending point with that. And then Kenton just kind of like addresses it to him straight up because Kenton's like an OBS kind of (laughs) guy. And he's just like, well, I'm beating your ass in a, in a, in a tub. (laughs) Like, uh, you should probably figure out if you're willing to die for this girl. Um, well, wasn't that before he got her out of, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think that shows the so lengths then, that he's going. He, yeah. Like, then the next episode, he jo- goes and saves her from the psych place. I think that was the end of the episode, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, it was well, oh, this was the same episode, huh? I think you're right. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. But <clears throat> Jamie's character, I think, I think it's funny how he's so much more fleshed out than her actual boyfriend. You only see him know, for yeah. so like it's such a small blip. Do you think that they could have done that a little better? No. Like, do you do you care less about like the loss of Sergey because they like I do. But he was are, only in the show for like one episode, and then like he comes back around again later, and then he's just like, I see you broke up with your boyfriend. I'm a nice guy. That kind of actually uh, did a little bit. Yeah. To make you feel a little more. Just getting to see how they met, yeah. and that he he was kind of has charm, but kind of doesn't at the same time. Yeah, like, he's kind of got a goofy charm. Yeah, yeah. But just the uh, how else would you have done it? Because if you do take any more time introducing him as a character and getting people like making you like him and fleshing him out, you're delaying the story that much further. Right, and I feel like that the last episode that I watched was a lot of that. It was, a, it. It, it was a lot of like the, the, the plot is going to step aside for the moment and we're going to, we're going to pause that and we're going to go and give you some character development. And mm-hmm. that felt like how that whole episode was where they showed you like, you know, like they're ha- making Kenton out to, they use that episode to make Kenton out to be the Mike character. Yeah. And, and like they showed like how Jamie's, uh, Jamie and Lily's uh, relationship kind of, they drifted apart and then they and it was cool because they like worked it into the multiverse kind of thing where you're seeing like oh that was so the brilliant. way that things would have worked out if like her and jamie stayed together yeah. and if like she never met uh uh alexi or, well, not alexi uh, what's his name sergey sergey i i agree with you it did actually now that you mention it that that episode did have a lot of let's put the plot on hold yeah, well, and but, I th- I think that it needed to do that too. Like it needed to flesh things out a little more, because otherwise, yeah, otherwise it's like no, these characters were already five episodes in, mm-hmm. and we we don't have much in the way of character development. Yeah, and so yeah, I think it was necessary. Yeah, I'm interested to see where the series goes, how it how it finishes up. You know, like um, I I generally like the characters. I've enjoyed it. Does. So far, does this seem to you like something where uh, season two is really necessary? Or do you think I don't think there's going to be one? I think it's. You think they're going to wrap it? I don't think this is technically considered a season of a show. I think this is considered a mini series. So I think that they're going to probably just do this and be done with it. Which I hope. Yeah, that, I appreciate a story that knows when it's done. Yeah, yeah, for sure. This just feels like an elongated movie almost. Yeah. Like like I was like I described it before like just a black mirror episode taken out to length kind of in that way when you put it that way it actually makes me wonder if this is even necessary. Like is it actually good? I think we need the last two episodes to make that determination, but mm-hmm. <clears throat> if you look at it as this could have just been a really if you could have compressed this into a movie, mm-hmm. would it have been better? I don't know. I, I don't think so because like like we're talking about the the lack of character development until a certain episode. Like I think that, uh, but instead of having your long drawn out ten minutes of developing shot, you can have yeah. that development. But I don't know if that helps or not. Like I couldn't, 
if if you shortened it, like if you took that stuff and you shortened it and didn't give it the room to breathe, would it be as impactful? You know, I don't know. So um, I can agree with that. But yeah, I think I think once we finish the show, I think we'll come back and talk about it a little more and give like a final a final verdict. But I, I mean, I can I can definitely say that I would recommend it. Yeah, I think I think I'd recommend it definitely. Even though I, you know, we've said some negative things, mm-hmm. I, I think it's a must watch. Um, the just to pump it real quick, the episode seven. <laughs> pump it. <laughs> Sorry, episode seven is going to air on the ninth. The and ninth. The, the final episode airs on the sixteenth. Speaking of the ninth, do you did you hear that we might get our Voldemort checks? On the, oh, on the if you I think if you. Uh, filed your taxes and did a uh, direct deposit that they're going to start sending out uh, stimulus checks on the 9th. Oh, I did not know that. So that's going to be my camera check. <laughs> my camera well, check. I think you can count on me to come up to date with all of the stuff that you've invested. Well, hopefully we can, uh, hopefully we can get it used, you know, set up shortly. <laughs> um, but you know, we're always going to deliver the audio podcast as well. Even if we do add a video, uh, element relatively soon you know yeah, so I, there will hopefully in time give us time we want to deliver on quality we will be doing more things yes like so. we, we said at the start of the episode this is our inaugural episode so uh we're getting we, we we've officially got the training wheels on at this point <laughs> but hopefully it doesn't take us too long to actually learn to go only on two wheels so um I guess uh, we can wrap it up now. Yeah. Um, we <clears throat> we are Nonsensory Pod. You can find us. Uh, I mean, if you type in Nonsensory, you can find us wherever. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Yeah, Facebook, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch are all under Nonsensory. And um, Twitter, we're under Nonsensory 1. You can find us on any, any of the social platforms. Um, hopefully we'll be up on Spotify and iTunes and stuff like that at some point in the future. If not right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like we said, we're, we're kind of freewheeling it now. Um, but we will have this out. And if you do end yeah. up hearing it, we hope you've enjoyed We're stepping your time out with into us. the abyss. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm just looking over the edge. Just like, ooh. <laughs> the, the abyss also has just like, uh, not only am I going to jump into it, but I'm going to take like a bunch of my money into it as well. <laughs> <laughs> so that's cool. Um, oh, but yeah, um, hopefully we'll be back with you next week with another episode. And uh, we can maybe talk a little more devs, maybe talk some Better Call Saul. Um, maybe do like some more, we'll definitely have some more gaming news. Maybe we'll do like a segment about like a a top 10 list or something like that. Everybody loves top 10 lists. Um, or, you know, we'll, we'll get into some, some different segments in the, in the near future. So we're, we're still playing around with things, but, uh, definitely let us know what you think. Yeah. If you're, uh, tips and suggestions, if you've you've got a way to comment and leave some feedback, please do. Uh, we want to, do everything we can to take audience uh, opinions into account and improve everything that we can. So no, we don't, we don't care. <laughs> no, I mean like if it takes too much effort, obviously I'm not going to do it, but <laughs> no, 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 seriously. We really appreciate you guys uh, stopping by listening and uh, sticking with us on this kind of long inaugural episode, but at least you know that you can expect us to never have a shortage of things to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Um, so thanks for listening. Peace and be easy. Yeah, everybody stay safe out there. We love you. Have a good one.